Yeah, go on, let's get into it's, some LEC, yeah. though. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it, let's do it. Since this is the best damn league show, I feel like we should go just straight to the classic. We can do any of the series, but obviously we can talk about that as we do this anyway. So here's the problem, Dom. We actually had, in this last week, the classic matchup where, you know, you know they normally bill it, Dom, as it's the immovable object versus the irresistible force. Well, in this particular scenario, it was the other way around. What it had was, you had this. You had a fanatic, which is supposed to finally be, like, told, you're just not good enough. You're not actually a true top team. You got away with it all this time, but finally, the real team's BDS and SK here. So it's, you're just done for now. We know you're frauds, so don't worry. You had that on one hand, Dom, but then you're ready. This is the problem. What would make that not obvious, though, is on the other side of the scale, you had, are you ready, an SK that's looked really good in the BO1s, and surely this time they're going to... Oh, God, that... When those two collide, I know I'm in for some absolute shit show. And by the way, no human could ever predict that matchup. Like, it could... That, that matchup could be anything, Dom. It could be two clean 2-0 SK. It could be clean 2-0 Fnatic. It could be the messiest 2-1 SK ever. It could be the messiest 2-1 Fnatic. It could just... It could be anything. So... What did you think of this matchup? Because as, as expected, right when I actually did, I did like all bets like SK 2-0, SK wins. So of course for like clean 0-2-0, zero, zero. Noah doesn't die once. Like, all right, we're in the twilight zone. Come and hit me with it. What do you think of this matchup? So, so I, I did Fnatic 2-0 at 4.4 odds. Ooh, I literally hit that bet. Oh, I, 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 I bet you were loving it on game finished. two then. You were loving it, mate. Okay. Yeah, I was loving it because the logic I used, like sometimes I feel like you have to get a little stupid with it. And it's like, sure. what would be the most fanatic thing ever? <laughs> would right. be having this disgusting series versus Giant X and then also performing like pretty well against, uh, against sure. SK. Obviously there's more to it than that. Like I was thinking about fanatic in the terms of like, I've, I think that SK is, is actually frauds. Like I don't think they're Ooh, okay. legitimately a good team. There's a lot of problems that I see sure. uh, with how they play. They have the, they're essentially the same team as they were before. I, um, Yamato always says this, but I 100% agree. They're the same team they were before. Their bot lane is just better mechanically. Like, Exekick doesn't get caught and lose the whole game yep. anymore. And, like, you know, uh, Luan is just a better player than DOS. That's all they are. They still have the same exact issues. They still um, don't have solid macro. I think that Isma is a big liability on this team. Um, his AP junglers are not great. I mean, now he's playing Nidalee. I'm not huge on his Nidalee. I mean, what I want to see is like Zyro brand, this type of these types of picks. But it feels like at his core, Isma is just a Sejuani player. Like he just wants to be engaged. He wants to be relatively tanky and he wants to play a champion that has a decent amount of forgiveness, which these AP junglers don't. So for me, this matchup, I was sided towards Fnatic because I felt like Fnatic is just... They're just a... They're like a vibe team, to be honest. And the only teams that I'm scared of when it comes to Fnatic, are teams that have good macro, and the only team that has good macro right now in the LEC is G2. I think G2 is the only team that Fnatic can't beat. I think everyone else, they could just beat based off players just having a good game, yeah, sure. and them just having picks that they're confident in. Like, everyone has these picks that they're good at that enables everyone else. I think Humanoid's still really sus, but Noah's, Noah had a good series. His, his Kai'Sa was good. Um, John on Engage, you have tanks for Oscar Rinnan, and then Razor on some type of, of carry. I think this recipe works really well for Fnatic. And that will be good enough versus every team in the league besides for G2. That's what I think. The angle I want to pick you up on is the Isma one, the jungler for SK. Because my problem is this, Dom, right? Look, he is still a rookie. So I'll always mention that every time we talk about this player. Because essentially, what I'm going to critique about him is what makes him not the type of player that if you were not a rookie, would be a top jungler. Like, I can actually forgive a little bit of the weakness because it's his first year still. He's working with different players, etc. But the same issues have been present all three splits. And I agree with you. Like, this is a player I always describe as fragile. Because like, there's, there's like a sort of a path when they're playing that can work and it can look really good but it feels like if something goes wrong at the key moment this guy just crumbles mate and the one thing I want to bring up is since in Europe especially because we've had all these ERLs that everyone's been trying like brain drain all the talent from we've tried so many rookie junglers in LEC the last four or five years Dom that I actually think the more I watch that role I actually think jungle is the most inappropriate role to put rookies in depending on like what you expect from them because bro when I think of like how jungle works like I was thinking about this recently when I did some interviews with NA players, LCS players. Because, dude, when I've been talking to all the players who've played with that guy, River, who was obviously on, like, Dignitas and NRG, et cetera, uh, sorry, Golden Guardians or whatever it was, when I was talking to people who played with him, dude, the way they talk about that guy reminds me of how all those players used to talk about Smithy, where it's like, it's not like he's actually watching a VOD and then he's written it all down, like Peyton Manning and getting all the X's and O's, right, we're going to do that. They, they, somehow these guys, it's like a mixture of, like, they just have, like, crazy mental, so when they're behind in a game or something goes wrong they just don't sort of like 
panic or give up. They just sort of figure out like, right, I'll get, I'll, there'll be a play I can make to get back in at some point. And then the other thing is, their, their teammates say that it's like they just go off intuition. It's just their feel for the game. They can just somehow feel when like they can invade a quadrant and there's no one there or when they should go and like cover a top or something. They're not even necessarily getting like a crazy comp that they're going off. So these two, when I think of these players and these are the players that like the other players revere and if you watch their game, they tend to be really good floor raisers. Like the problem is the rookie jungler like this, he has the opposite of that. Like if anything, that's why people had that whole angle of like he needs Nisky. Like people think he needs his hand held a little bit. So I want to know what you think of this because the problem I have is SK has done this a bunch of times. They've looked like they were ready to go from like Dark Horse to like a true contender. But I do think he is one of the factors that holds you back because the difference is in the BO1s, he tends to look pretty decent to good. And then every time in the series, you're going to get a series where this happens. You'll have one series at least where he'll sort of just look a bit out of sorts or he'll look exposed. And obviously, look, in this case, he was going against probably the best jungler, Razork. But it's not going to get any better if you go to world. So what do you think on this angle, John? What do you think of like having... Fr a fragile jungler seems like a massive gamble to me. Yeah, I think fragile jungler is, is an issue, but I think that it's also just like structure within the team that people can play through. It feels like SK was just kind of like hands checking people. I think that Isma, his strength is finding really early plays. I think his first like clear, he kind of understands when he's strong, where he can invade, like what type of plays he can make. He has good idea um, about ganks, but they don't have like, when you watch SK, they don't have this team structure where if the game doesn't have these openings in it, which normally in playoffs, people are playing safer. Yep. There's not as many natural openings in the game as, as there are in best of ones. When the game is more stable like that, how are they going to get a lead? Like, what are they going to do? Do they have a set play? Can they roam bottom? Um, like, are they playing to get irrelevant ahead? Like, how do they do it? It just feels like none of this actually occurs within the team. They kind of just are all vibing out, doing whatever they think they should in the game. And then maybe if Rahel gets strong enough, he can carry the game. That's kind of how it feels. And that's never a recipe for success in the playoffs. I feel like there's a lot of teams that have had this trajectory in LEC, and you just see the same issues happen over and over. Like reminds me of kind of the misfits teams that we had in like 2022 where they don't, because they don't have a path towards getting strong. A lot of times it just doesn't happen in these games. And then the team that has, you know, more experienced players just ends up beating them. Because I actually, I will isolate one play. At the very beginning of the SK Fanatic series, you had that play where Isma came into the mid lane and there was like a 2v2 fight. And SK at one point, like, first of all, they just get like the kill, I think, on Humanoid. Then yep. they like could have gotten the kill on Razog and just gone 2 0. And they fuck it up so badly, it actually ends as a two kills for Fnatic and only the first kill for, for SK. And in this, what's mad about this play, though, if you go back and watch it, is Isma clearly is just going all in the whole way. He's trying to go for both kills. Mm -hmm. Niski like watches the first kill, then like doesn't follow him, then follows him late. And so what's weird about this, Tom, is that really to me, bearing in mind, remember, like I know they win, this team won't be speaking French, but they both in theory should be able to come with each other. Like that just looks like you weren't coming at all, which is weird because people, like I said, were bigging up the idea that like it's going to be the best thing for his Like him and Niski will be like on the same page, you'll be like mind controlled. Like actually sometimes I actually think like they don't even have that great a synergy always, mate. I think that angle's been overblown with this team. I think in that situation, it's just humanoid dies, right? Like humanoid griefs. Super he did. Hard, he was one. way like, too far up. It was ridiculous, wasn't like, it? And he was 100% dead. He had like, no way to get out. Zero get out. Yeah. It, it was really, it was really bad. And then what Isma doesn't realize is that Niski just doesn't have mana. So like Niski right. doesn't want to follow it. Like right. maybe, I think halfway through it, like towards the end of it, he got his biscuit proc. So Isma was going to die regardless. And then maybe if Niski played it better, he could pop his biscuit. Then he right. could get two for one. But I feel like this is just the discipline is they've already won the situation so hard. And there's like so much so risk associated with the play um, that I feel like Isma should just be like able to take the small win. Right? right. And snowball that into something else. But it feels like every play needs to be such a big win for SK for them to feel confident that they yes. are like actually ahead. Like when they have small advantages, it doesn't feel like they leverage them into some like massive advantage and just carry the game. It feels like each situation is like a big win or a big loss or, or it's negative for them. Because, yeah, I have to say, this is why I, I'm always so tentative about SKS. Like, I'm always just worried that some of those players just fucking won't hold up. Right? What about... Um 
Do you actually think... Oh, I've got an angle for you. I, I think an obvious topic to bring up about SK, because people haven't really done it specifically, is... I also think, by the way, the Ryle um, recruitment to me, I do think that the world has changed since, like, four or five years ago, Dom. You know, when, like, the RL system first came online, the take was... I mean, obviously, the famous example was Gorilla when he came to that Misfit Super Team. The take became, unless it's, like, a guarantee that the Korean player is, like, just cracked out and amazing, or it's someone like Bo, where they just look like they have mad talent. The premise was, right you should just try the European player. Like, why not just stick with an ERL player or someone you've already got and et cetera. I actually think I'd, I would start to go the other way on that now, Dom. I think if you look at some of the names, like Jun is an obvious one. I can obviously play LEC level, by the way. He could probably be in LEC for years at this point in time. I actually think low-key, he's even the person who's sort of low-key fixed fanatic to some degree. Uh, obviously, Rahel looks mega himself. Like, some of these Ice. players are good. Ice, by the way, Ice actually... Has he ever? I, I don't know if he ever has a bad game, mate. It just looks like his flaws impossible. It's like the most yeah, stable always... player ever, isn't it? Like these players, like actually, absolutely deserve import slots. Like, I actually feel like I'm going the other way on that, Dom. Like it's more like the other way around. And I'll go the other way. If you've got a really guaranteed banger from ERL, bring him up. I'm going to go the other way though. If instead you can just get what looks like just a solid LC, LCK player, actually, depending on the position, that looks like it is a good move. Like I'm, I've sort of gone against the tide on that one. Like, what do you think on the import topic? it's really interesting because the whole idea of getting the ERL player is supposed to be that you can develop them but yes. what LEC does consistently is they just pick up random players for one split or half a split or whatever and then they or like one year and then they just kick them yep. it's like how many different LEC or like ERL players have moved up into the LEC like I mean just off the top of my head it's just like just junglers right Tink, Schlott and Douglas like this is all just oh, in like Lord. the last like yeah. few years like there's so many players that, that get these yep. these opportunities um and then they just get kicked like the second anything bad happens I mean Linkus is now in uh we'll see how long that lasts there's so many of these players that, that get these opportunities and then there's no development it's like they don't believe in development at yep. all they just want an ERL player that's good immediately and if that player is not good they just try to get another ERL player and they're hoping that they just hit the next big player who's just insane from ERLs, but there used to be development. Like development used to be an idea within um, within the LEC, and I feel like that is like completely gone. These players are just picked up, and if they're not good, they're just they're they're gone. Like I'd be very surprised if Frescawi is in oh, LEC obviously. next year. Yes, you know. I mean, like, my joke for him is his big problem is he's not Spanish, mate. So he's shallow luck, and he like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Zwiru, like, I don't know if this guy's going to no, stay. probably not. It just feels like there's a lot of players that shuffle in and out. I mean, Mercer was in for a little bit. Now he's out. I mean, we had check a lot for, I mean, just off the top of your head, there's so, oh, so many, many players um, that are getting, like, short amounts of time within the LAC, and then they get kicked immediately. So I feel like the GMing just needs to be better. Like, when you talk to coaches about those old teams that were brought up from ERL, that was, like, reasoning behind why this team was brought up together or, like, what type of players they were getting. Now I feel like they just want their player to be good. It's like they, it's like every player is the same. They don't have strengths, weaknesses. There's no like genius GMing about them fitting into teams that make sense. Just is this player good or not? Oh, he's not good. All right, then he's fucking done. That's how that's how it works every time. So if that's the case and you're not actually planning on developing players and you're not um, and you're just looking for like who is the best player right now, then yeah, just get a Korean then. To see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content, well, subscribe to this channel then, or, you know, be a pleb and don't.